Well, Tim doesn't have a whole lot of time because the rocket is currently tilting towards the ground right now. So we need to quickly boost away and whoa, re-engage SAS. Okay, so we can get some altitude here and we might actually have enough rocket power to stabilize an orbit. Granted, not a very high one, but whoa, whoa, that's actually pretty low right there. <laughs> Apoapsis is currently losing itself, but let's warp two there and then boost again to stabilize orbit. Yes, beautiful. Okay, so Tim made a very quick exit from the moon, but now he's in a position that we can actually save him because I wasn't sure my success about landing another thing on the moon if I can't even leave it. We could probably stabilize this orbit a bit more or we just push the Apoapsis even further away from the moon so that the next vessel has more room to work with. Yeah, I think we'll do that. It'll be quick. And, ooh, that's actually pretty far away. Okay, Apoapsis is 570 meters away. And now that we don't need any of these rockets anymore, let's just point radial in, give ourselves a nice spin, and hiya! Fling it towards the moon, because we're not needing it anymore. And now Tim can just float in space. Is that gonna crash? I hope that crashes. Its trajectory says otherwise, but oh well. That's a really dramatic view right there. Tim is just gonna have to hold on tight while we make our way back to the vehicle assembly building and work on a rescue vessel. Since this thing isn't the most ideal for what we're doing. So we can actually hold on to everything below the can and then everything above we'll just get rid of. And then we need to bring a pod in to go right there to actually be the core of the vessel. And then we just need to make sure that it's empty so that Tim can crawl into it once he gets there. And to actually control it, we'll put on a probe right there. And then we won't need to worry about parachutes because we can just attach those radially. Like so, that looks good. And then we'll keep the science can on there because we can still get some good science from the moon. Oh, and speaking of that, we're gonna need some solar power. And we do have enough science points to get better power in the power management. So we'll unlock that, which actually does give us access to the research miniaturization if we had enough points. And that's only 0 0.05 tons. That's way smaller than the science can that we already have. That might be worth looking into. Thankfully, Mission Control is here to give us missions that are worth science points. I absolutely knew this existed. Don't worry about it. So we just need to launch a rocket from Kerbin and get 10,000 kilometers in the air. That's easy to do. Tim's fine where he's at. He can let us do this. He'll understand. This also gives us a good chance to test out this rocket just the way it is. So we'll just bring it to the pad and launch it. It's a lot smaller, so it takes off a lot quicker, which is good. It still seems to be under its own weight. Oh, I forgot to add a reaction wheel. Whoops. It's fine. We just need to get to 10,000 kilometers. Oh, and there it is correcting itself. Hey, look, it's the moon where Tim is waiting. Hopefully he's not getting too impatient. Booster row one is done. So we detach and then fire the next set. Whoa, and there it starts to flip. Okay. Oh yep. Okay, need you to go straight up. You're not going straight up. You're going sideways and I can't turn these off. Also, did I say 10,000 kilometers before? That's absolutely not what I meant. Okay, so we made six kilometers. Now we're starting to see where things are going wrong and a major part of that is a reaction wheel so we just turn on rcs valentino what are you doing in the pilot seat uh fine it's not like you're going anywhere don't worry about losing you like tim but going straight up this is working a lot better sadly it's pointed the wrong way for the solar panel to be effective but we're just going straight up so it shouldn't be too bad look at how far the reaction wheel is pulling that wow oh and uh, it uh, doesn't look like it's enough all right disconnect those Fire the boosters, hopefully it corrects itself. It looks like it's correcting itself, but that's not right away. Might be because the center of thrust is right next to the center of mass. Oh, and look at that. It's at a bit of a tilt. Interesting. Not even sure what would be doing that. Oh, never mind. I absolutely see what's doing that. The weird symmetry is not in our favor here. So let's just scrap all of this because it's a mess. And now we just have these rockets, which the setup works in theory. Problem is it makes it very impossible to attach anything, unless you're like super exact with where it is. So that seems to be working a lot better. It's straight up and down, that's good. Now the problem is just making sure all the other things line up and line them up exactly. There we go, straight up and down. I think this set of boosters should be enough. We might not even need the other row after this. And if it gets too sketchy, we can just attach the boosters early. It is already tilting, that's not a good sign. All right, fine, just get rid of you. Wait for the rocket to fix itself and go. I'm hoping the center part here can just get to 10 kilometers on its own. I don't know why I keep saying 10,000. Probably because that's what that means. And that's tilting now. Why, why are you, are you like me? this? 
Okay, but now it corrects itself, so it's something with the air drag. Anyway, let's just resume what we were doing. And there's 10 kilometers, cool. So we'll just shut that off right there. And whoa, immediately spinning out of control, but there it is. Science reward available, submit mission brief. Oh wait, those are the mission briefs. Well, we completed the mission, so we just gotta return home. Oh, so now you decide to correct yourself when you're supposed to return home. Aren't you pleasant? Well, I don't need you anymore, so goodbye. Hopefully, did you detach properly this time? I don't think you did. That decoupler needs to go next, I think. And then we just deploy the parachutes. And then Valentina makes a nice gentle return back to base. I wonder if I can control where this lands using these things. Doesn't really matter. She's going for a swim right in the backyard. Although this is a little fast, but she's fine. And thankfully it's very buoyant and we can still get some water samples. That's fun. Elsa says that can if she just goes outside. Can she swim? Hopefully you can swim. Let go. Oh yeah, she can swim. Can she collect water samples? Oh my gosh, she totally can collect water samples. Wow. That's gotta be worth something, right? Oh yeah, quite a bit. And then recover vessel. Beautiful. And mission control was happy with that result. So now we can get research miniaturization, which is gonna help us out a lot. Research it. Now to do the major modifications or just, you know, start from scratch. So we have our cute little landing pod here. And instead of a giant science desk, we have a small radial one. So that can just go right over here, just like that. It's very protrusive, but it works. Just need to make sure it survives, which it should. And now we just do our thing of giant rocket, go on there. Just gonna make the return vessel as small as possible. So as we pointed out earlier, aerial drag is a thing. So we just need this thing to be very aero friendly. And this is looking pretty good, I think. Now it would be really cool if we could just stack decouplers on the thrust boosters like so, and then just put boosters on the bottom. But that's limiting the number of boosters, so we won't do that. Instead, we'll just see how this goes right here. It actually looks kind of cool, not gonna lie. Hopefully it doesn't cause massive amounts of spinning. The center thrust is in line and looking pretty straight up and down. Let's just see if we can get away with strapping more fuel tanks on the main rocket parts. And that adds a little more. It's not quite enough. But if we just add a few more boosters like we do, and we're still in line, there goes up another thousand. Just slapping stuff on until it makes it. Although we're getting diminishing return on all these boosters. Okay, this might look weird, but hear me out. We've got two rows of boosters, the bottom one will fire before the top, and then we have extra powerful thrusters at the bottom because apparently that gives more Delta V, who would have thought? All's well and good, but this is a lot of free real estate in the middle that we're not using. So what if we just attach a few more, few cells so we get a big long boy and then yes we're getting 9,000 delta v that's really close to our goal how about just Another one more and that gets us a little more delta v i feel like spongebob trying to clean that plate just adding more power except the last one is actually taking away some delta v so let's just go ahead and get rid of it all right this should be enough to make the trip now it's just a matter of getting there in a way that we intercept him. We might just have to hope that he's in position when we get there, or this is enough to secure an orbit. The reaction wheel is pretty far away from the center of mass, but once all this is stripped away, that's very much gonna change, I think. It will. I'm just kind of hoping that this thing stays up right by the time we get to orbit. It's just very, very slow. Thankfully, we can make all the corrections because we have an extra battery and extra solar panels, so we're always getting sunlight. It's just gonna be tricky when we need to tilt. At least now we can lose some weight. Hopefully nothing collides. Okay, we're good. Now we continue. And there's stuff falling from the sky. That must have been from the flight earlier. I didn't realize that was still up there. That's funny. We're at 7,000 meters, give or take. Uh-oh, it's starting to do things. Okay, but now we can detach those. Uh-oh, uh, that's stuck. Just rotate to get it off of me. That's one away and two away. <laughs> that was actually pretty graceful in its own right. But now we're starting to fall, so boost and go straight up. Okay, we are effectively hovering now, but this is wasting a lot of fuel. All right, this stage has been a bit of a waste, but the more weight we lose, the better this should be, I hope. Okay, disconnect and go. Okay, <laughs> that's a lot more control there. I don't know why I was using those other thrusters. I said it was good for early stage. Maybe it's just less good here. Oh well, 
And thankfully, this middle fuel canister doesn't react to the heat of the thrusters pointed directly at it. So that's good. But we are getting like no altitude. Also, these things rely on oxygen to function. So whoa, 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 whoa. Where are you going? Where are you going? Okay, time out, you. What are you doing? We're barely in atmosphere. Why are you doing flips and turns and everything? Okay, nothing with that previous rocket was working. So we're just going to go back to here with the one that for sure makes it to the moon. And we're just going to make a couple of changes so let's make sure we're not tilting as far as quickly something like that looks pretty good and then we'll do the thing we did before where we just rearrange this we have all the things firing to give us a lot more boosting power and more delta v to boot so where's the moon at oh great it's over there this will be a bit of a move for a slingshot but hopefully we can make it and there's an orbit okay now let's see, we can set the launcher and lander as target. And then when we get to about here is when we're going to need to burn like crazy to push this out far enough to intercept. Unless the moon's going to be like way in the wrong spot. Oh yes, way in the wrong spot. It's going to be way over there. I keep forgetting about that one weird setup for planet intercepts. So now we have a course going on both sides of the moon right there. I like that a lot better. So we just get ourselves pointed around to mission point. And then we burn, picking up a lot of speed as we do. We'll have to be very exact with the stop. Three, two, one. Yeah, I panicked. But that's okay, just a little bit more. Okay, it did the first one. The second one is not there, but that's something we can work with. So can we slow ourselves down enough that the moon can slingshot us back to Earth or Kerbin? Ooh, it seems like it right there. That's something a lot more doable. And we just need to make sure that Tim will be next to it when it happens. I feel like that's up to chance at this point. Someone in the comments is gonna tell me that it really isn't and there's a perfectly math way to do it, but I don't know math that well. I finished it in high school. It's also kind of fun looking at this projected trajectory because we leave, we go around the curb in, and then we do like this weird snap turn to go back. But if it works out for us, then good. We just have to hope to ourselves that it does. Oh, and I just realized we are in the sphere of influence now. Neat. That should mean we have more reports to send. Might as well do it. Since we are losing a lot of samples on the other vessel, which is too bad. But this vessel has its own samples, so it's not an entire waste. Oh, I'm just very nervous about this. Now what I'm hoping for is as we approach the moon this first time, Tim's vessel should show up on the point of, you know, there's this thing. Okay, we're getting closer to the moon, but I'm still not seeing anything. Does he even show up? It says he's behind us now. Can I continue? control you and see where I'm at. Hello hey, Tim, there. how's it been? Okay, I see absolute... Oh, is that? No, that's the other thing. Well, where's the other vessel? Do they not even see each other on radars and such? Well, that would be a problem if that were true. Okay, now we're getting intersect points. Distance from target. Oh, that's a long ways away. Okay, and there's two points there. So if we just bring those together. Okay, I was able to fine tune the intercept as much as I could, but our distance is still 3,000 meters and a relative speed is 55, which is a lot at this point, but I think we might just have to go with it or at the very least fine tune it some more once we get done with this burn, but that Ooh. takes 400 Delta V, which is a lot more than I wanted to, but we're kind of at the point where we just wing it. So away we go. All right, countdown is going. We're moving our orbit, which is good and then done. Okay, how we line up? Quite a bit from where we want to be, but we can adjust from here. Okay, here's less than a thousand meters from target, but it's 78 meters per second relative speed. Even if Tim left a shuttle, I don't think he'd be able to catch up with that. I'm just having to check all angles of this approach to see where I need to adjust it. Okay, we're, oh, we're there. Oh yes, okay, hang on Tim. I know you're out there somewhere. If only he had energy to turn on a light so I could see him. Toward the point, oh, Tim is definitely going faster than me, it looks like. Just gonna keep going forward. I really wanna see Tim come up in the view, but I'm worried I'm gonna miss him. And I mean, granted, he is still 100,000 meters away. So he's probably very small if he's out there. Oh, here we get a distance of 31 meters. Oh, that's gonna be fast though. Hopefully Tim can keep up because he's not gonna like what I have planned for him. Oh, but there he is. He's finally showing up 45 kilometers away and closing in fast. Oh dear. Can this thing just like autopilot itself to the burn maneuver thing? 
and do that. That would make it a lot easier for me. So if I were to take control of Tim here and send him on a spacewalk, could he intercept it himself? Let's see. Let's have you set the target to the other launcher, which he can thankfully see. I don't even know which one is the hypothetical one anymore. This is something I'm going to have to control manually, though. I think we did it. They're still too close. Okay, now Tim has got to do the hard part. He's going to have to spacewalk there. So be brave, Tim. That's a fast moving intercept. But if you let go. Oh, oh, he's, oh, this is this is honestly a fear moment right here. He's just floating in space. Okay, but do that suit. Yep. And then you should be able to. Oh, yeah. But now how? Whoa, he's walking on it. <laughs> okay, yeah, walk that way. Oh, dear. Oh, he doesn't have a lot of mono propellant either. Uh-oh. But if he's 35 meters away from here in that direction, then that should be good for him, right? Oh, dear. Be safe, Tim. Can you take a sample of space? No, he can't. <laughs> you can't just rip out the tube and get some space in there. Oh, man. That is terrifying. He's 80 meters away from that thing now. How you doing, Tim? <laughs> he's got a big, bright smile on his face. He has no idea what he's doing. He's getting farther away from the intersect. We're just gonna have to watch it get close and then see what adjustments need to be made. And he is not liking this anymore. I just want to be able to physically see it without that big icon being in the way. This is absolute sketch right here. Okay, but there, yep, it's getting close. It's getting very close, very fast. And oh no, overshot. Ah! <laughs> no! I think Tim picked up too much speed. Oh, and this vessel missed the burn plan to bring the intercept closer. Well, it's just a rule of thumb, so let's just manually do it. Now where am I going? That's not a question you should be asking in space. <laughs> Okay, at least you're able to stay relatively close to this. We might just have to do that. Or, you know what, let's just grab on to the capsule again and then reset ourselves. Just get ourselves right back. This is try by fire for spacewalks and and grab it. Okay, we reset ourselves. Now it's less than a thousand meters. Oh gosh, it's back here. Punch it with your face, Tim. That actually looks like that might be what happens. Oh gosh. Ah! Oh, what? It was gone. <laughs> It was going so fast, it phased right through him. Oh no. So what I'm gonna need to do is just quickly backpedal away from the chamber and pick up some speed going this way. Need to slow down that rate. That's closing in. Oh, I think I'm getting it. I think I'm getting it. Oh man, this is a big moment. My heart is racing right now. Salvation is in sight. Uh-huh, yeah. Tim, welcome to your new home. Yes! Oh, we did it. Oh, no way. We just did a mid-space transfer. Huh? Goodbye, Lander. Get on out of here. I don't need you anymore. No way. He still has all the samples. Oh, I was wondering. And it's true. Oh, we have all the science at our disposal and way too much data to transfer. Uh, I, need, I need to take a moment. Wow. <laughs> I can't believe I just did that. So next difficult part, getting out of here. But hey, that's something that we can feasibly do now. Thanks to the trusty slingshot maneuvers. Actually, if I can do that routine I did before where I leave the moon and then come back, I can slingshot myself back towards Earth. Kerbin, I'm not caring about terms right now. <gasps> there it is. Oh, yes. And it only takes 400 Delta V to do it. And it's a 12 second burn. This is very doable. Tim, buddy, you're coming home. The relic of our mistakes comes back to meet us can we see it again hey look we can <laughs> paying one last visit eh tim is certifiably on his way home tim better get a medal or something i don't know how awards on kerbin work maybe even just a t-shirt that's got like a whole bunch of little intern doodles on it link in the description all right enough talk let's bid the moon farewell as we slowly leave the sphere of influence a little faster because i'm impatient the moon goes farewell and hello kerbin so we'll just do a fun thing of dismissing all of those rockets in very dramatic fashion that's what i like to see and then make sure this thing's pointed retrograde before we hit atmosphere and then we just get a little bit closer less than a thousand kilometers away i think it might be and now's the point where we can dismiss the other engines like so whoa 
Oh gosh, did we lose anything? How are they going so fast? What? We're still going home, so that's fine, but wow, those things shot ahead. Okay, see you later. But look at that horizon line. That's pretty cool. Oh, and there is this other part that we can detach as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, now all we have left is the parachutes. And thankfully enough, electric current to stabilize ourselves. Okay, oh, they were hitting atmosphere. Okay, oh no, that's not good. We're coming in very hot. Survive it! Ah! We just won't talk about what happened there, but the angle that we were entering at was pretty shallow. So let's just figure out which way we need to fix ourselves to make this go a little better. And then we'll just do that like so. All right, pretty good. Hopefully you survive this time, Tim. Supposing we point this thing prograde so that the other elements take the brunt of the heat first. All right, you know what? We're just gonna burn straight down. Have other things take the brunt of the heat, which is kind of working. We need to get past the Bernie part, which nothing seems to be able to, except those things. Huh? Look at them, they're surviving. Okay, I've been trying to get this figured out for a while, but I think our main problem is that this heat shield isn't big enough to protect the landing can. So what we're gonna do instead is send Tim on and orbit around Kerbin, and then we'll send another vessel to pick him up because we're good at that all of a sudden. I'll be right back, Tim, don't worry. So this setup works, it just can't survive re-entry. And the problem is that this can is too big. Is it just as simple as replacing it on everything? And then that way, when the landing can does deploy, everything works good. Also, why aren't there any steps? Will this really work like this? It'd be kind of funny if it did. It's basically the same thing, except the core of the vessel, the rescue pod thing is an actual one that can survive the atmosphere. A real time to change the lean of it, but we're just gonna go. Oh my gosh, look at all that debris that's still up in the air. I'm not even sure what it is anymore. It's just, stuff just kind of falls out of the sky. Now we disconnect that stage and then, okay, I should have fired right away, but ooh, just a backflip for style and then go right up. There we go, we pretty much saved it. And now that stage is done. So let's disconnect and then fire all those rockets. Nice. Now where's Tim at? Hello, Tim. How you doing? This rescue operation has more involved than I thought because heat decided to be a thing. So now let's plan an intercept. Okay, so we can get there on the second go around, which actually might be better. There we go, 300 meters, but that's really fast. We can work on slowing down after we're for sure this is the trajectory. And we're already feeling heat? We're not even touching atmosphere here. We're just gonna go with it then. It's amazing how you can stop just like a split second too soon or too late and it throws it off so much. That's looking a lot better. 200 meters and smaller relative speed. And away we go. Okay, right there, 319 meters. I can work with that. We'll leave that as is. It is also right next to the arrival point. So this is a pretty touchy maneuver. Just pointing straight in towards Kerbin, but burn it all. Three, two, one. Okay, stop, and now we're out of fuel. Okay, pause time. Where is things? Oh, it's, it's hmm. right there. Oh dear, Tim, you're gonna have to move. And go, two, one, stop. Oh, that's almost an overlap, like entirely. That's a lot better. I like how you can still see the other vessel orbiting the moon. There you are. All right, Tim, let go. Okay, the problem is I'm not sure where he needs to burn his jetpack to line up with that thing. What I do want to know is we need to slow way down. Also, I don't know what sort of weird walking maneuvers he's doing in space. What are you doing, Tim? That's not how that works. That <gasps> is bizarre. Goodbye, Lander. Hopefully, I don't need you. But I need to slow down the relative speed to that while staying pretty in line with it. But it's kind of hard to tell when it's so far away. All right, Tim, I'm kind of a upset at the walking in boots in space thing now. And he's still doing it, of course he is. Tim doesn't follow the laws of physics. I'm not mm -hmm. sure Tim even realizes that he's walking in space. <laughs> Look, now Tim is standing on the earth, or Kerbin. If this ends up being a thumbnail preview, my mind will be blown, especially, uh Oh, are you getting tired there, Tim? Really, is this a lot of effort for you? It's a whole second day for me. Just kind of using Tim's helmet as a reference point for all this. Gonna put it just right in that corner there. Like a heads up display. Whoa, 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 don't get bonked, Tim. Whoa, okay, hold up. Slow down, wait, come back. Just, uh, da, 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 da. Okay, there's the door. 
just open it and climb inside. Jebediah is not in there this time. And board. Yes. We just did two transfers in one day. That's crazy. And now we have less than a thousand Delta V. So we'll just perform this maneuver at the Apoapsis to bring him right back home. Sunny side up. Good enough for me. We're just going to go for it. But now we are done with all these other rockets. So we'll just, whoa, dismiss all of them, which thoroughly threw off our angle of approach. Man, the rest of that did not want to be here. Fine, be like that. Okay, heat shield is the same size as the capsule, so it should work this time. Tim's excited. I would be too. He's going back home in a desert, which is probably his favorite region because science. Though I wonder if this science bit is at risk of burning up because it sticks out so far. Oh, yep. There's a clear surface on the science capsule. Oh, dear. Hopefully it doesn't throw me off too bad, but it's handling itself a lot better than before. That is good. That is very good. But we're still going, still going, still going good. Still going really good. The atmosphere burn is done. Yes, we survived. Yes. Now, what is it safe for these things? Oh, it is safe. All right, do it. Might have been pretty early. We didn't have a lot of speed, but hey, at this point, it doesn't matter. And parachutes deploy, giving us a very controlled descent to the surface which I'm gonna speed up because I'm too impatient. And gently touch down. <laughs> Don't ask me why, but I think it's a good idea if we land in the water. And 28 meters a second should be a lot nicer to us in the water than it is on land. And splash. Oh, yes. Active vessel is recoverable. I think I will do that. Never mind about the Tim that crashed in the desert. Recover it. Yes! Oh, wow. We just did a rescue from the moon all the way back to Kerbin and brought back a lot of science with us too. 700 points. That can get us started in the next big branch of the research tree. We get power launches here, which give us bigger boosters. Tier two unlocked, nice. And then medium orbital rockets. Ooh, with a bigger pad and a bigger heat shield. Boy, I wish I had this earlier, but we can unlock that too. And we get a whole lot of goodness available to us as well. Do we have enough to unlock everything here? I don't think so, but we can unlock basic docking. Hmm. That might be good for setting up like a space station, like a proper one, instead of leaving a rocket hurling through the abyss. That was such a valuable trip there. And that finishes the mission we set out to do a while ago. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It took a long time to pull that off. But in any case, thank you very much for watching and sub to intern. And thanks to the channel members, including Bread, Mr. Cripple One, Ancient Elixir One, Corby Farm, Dakota C, Donamoto, Vivian X, Muffin Suffer, Lucas S, Spider Sex, The Real Nickname, Hateful Herald, Peggy Sue, Drupalong, TJ, Seriously Sarcastic, Angel, Lily, and The Miner Within.